Hello, I'm Wendy. Today we're painting trees in a hedgerow and it's a tutorial. I'm showing you how I build up um, a loose watercolour today. It was inspired by this um, scene that I'm showing you here, which was um, just a tree and some sort of pink thistly flowers underneath it. And I passed this tree on a walk that I do most days with my dog and it um, it changes according to the seasons and I've painted it a few times. This is one of the pictures that I did. I must have painted it um, last August and um, we have the similar sort of white flowers. Some of it is meadowsweet and some of it is um, that flower I always forget the name of. Cow parsley. But um, I've not been too prescriptive about um, how I've painted the flowers. I've just suggested the pink shapes and the white shapes on the picture. You can see the sketch here that um, I'm working on. I didn't do as much of the foliage on the tree this time. I looked at the ref recent reference that I got and just put part of the tree on there. There were the pink thistles and um, in places there were the white flowers as well. And so I'm just um, masking these out. I usually mask out these flowers and if you go back to one or two of my other videos and I'll give you a link, I'll show you how I use the masking fluid. It's um, it's PBO gum and I've put a link to that in the description box. I found that is the best masking fluid. I've been using masking fluid for years and this is certainly the best one. I put um, a little round brush I used to put some of it on and then I here I'm using a very old rigger and I'm putting some of the grasses on there very very lightly. Rinsing the brushes out in a dilute um, washing up liquid solution to protect them while I'm uh, while I'm applying it. When the masking fluid is totally dry then what I like to do when I'm building up a picture like this is to put a very light wash on all over the paper looking at the reference and seeing what colours are there and putting on the lightest version that I see. I don't like to work little bits at a time. I, I find that just doesn't work for me. I like to, as I said, cover the whole picture Look carefully, I look carefully at the reference to see which the lightest colour is. And here um, we'd got the very, very light bluey grey sky. And um, while that was damp, then there were some trees in the distance. They might have been um, more of a green colour, but I think a purple colour works very well in these pictures. It gives you more of a sense of distance. You don't have to do it purple every time. And then I found that um, I needed a little bit more blue in the sky, so I dropped that in. And as you can see in the distance, I'd seen that um, very, very light yellow. Um, you could put a bit of blue with that, make it a bit cooler. Again, just to accentuate the distance um, in the picture. And here I'm mixing up some greens for the foreground. Again, I'm trying to, as much as I can, cover the whole of the paper. And I'm looking at some of the greens that were here. I'm using I'm using indigo again as the base blue, and I'm mixing indigo with um, a warm yellow, cadmium yellow or new gamboge for some of the warmer greens, and then you can use a cooler yellow, um, such as cadmium yellow light for some of the lighter greens. It's a nice palette, and I've been using that. Um, recently and really enjoying using it. Again, I was looking at the reference and trying to see what colours were there. I'm not making any descriptive marks particularly, I'm just trying to get these under washers, which hopefully will make the painting more interesting than suddenly going on and starting to paint um, very descriptive passages. There was an area of lighter grasses in the foreground, difficult colour, but um, I think I used um, raw sienna, a little bit of light red and a lot of water to, to keep that area very light. And then as you can see, before I went on to the next stage, I made sure everything was thoroughly dry. So I tackled the um, foliage on the tree next and I like to use what's called dry brush technique for some of the foliage where you're You've got a fairly stiff mix, um, it's not too watery 
and you use the side of the brush. In this case, I did dry that first layer because I didn't want um, too much wet into wet work on the initial stages. I wanted to have some more discreet marks and more hard edged marks, if you like. And you can see here, um, excuse my broken, messy palette. Um, you can see here that I'm uh, having a thicker mix now on the brush, but working in the same way. I'm doing another layer of the dry brush work. Some of the paint um, skims the surface and um, leaves the white sort of indentations on the paper. And so you get a sort of textural effect using the dry brush work, which I quite like. As you can see here, I'm gradually adding some of the darker paint and some of this is working more wet into wet as well. So I'm getting quite a variation of strokes here. I should say, I should say that the um, dry brush work does work better on a on a paper that's got some texture. I'm using a knot surface, which is fine. Um, I think if you're using a smooth paper, then you uh, you're not going to get that effect at all. I've switched brushes here, and I'm using a quill brush, which I like for the to well to make marks to suggest some actual individual leaves on the tree. I don't like to leave all the very big dry brush marks particularly unless it's really in the distance. If you've got a tree in the foreground then I like to show some detail on it and, um, and put um, some individual leaves on there. Clearly you can um, be as detailed as you want on this, uh, on this tree if you are more of a realistic, if you like, painter and, and want to do more detail then then do so the, mo the most important thing I, I think when you're painting is not the individual strokes how detailed you make it it's the overall picture getting the tones right getting the composition right getting the colors right whether you're doing it in a loose way or whether you're being extremely prescriptive and detailed it doesn't matter it's your style but um, the more I think about it recently, the more I'm inclined to put more importance onto composition and tone rather than trying to render all the details. I'm trying to make interesting and different marks in an area rather than describing in detail the structure of the things that are in the picture, if that makes any sense. I suppose if you went the whole hog with that, then it would be a a very abstract painting which is not what I'm into. Um, maybe I'll get semi-abstract um, later on, I don't know. I was seeing some warmer colours in my reference here so I've added some um, burnt umber or possibly some burnt sienna to the mix um, to warm it up. It's always a good idea I think to vary not only your strokes that you're trying to do, a bit of splattering here, but also the colour as well. I'm working on the foreground now and um, as you can see, really, this, this immediate foreground was in two parts. There was the area I'm working on now, and then there was a lighter part of the front. I wanted to accentuate that lighter part to give a bit of breathing space in the picture, a bit of space, because I do tend to clutter things up rather a lot. By changing the tones in a foreground area like this, it does give you more of a sense of depth and interest. I find I do it myself sometimes. You have an area that you have the same tone through, particularly foregrounds, and that doesn't work. If you've got the same tone all the way through this area, it would look very flat and boring. So I think the thing to do is to not be too concerned with detail, but to get some difference of tones in there and some different marks and um, different areas of colour as well. Now for the tree trunk and the branches, um, I used I used Payne's Grey with Burnt Umber, which is a different sort of brown from what I usually use. I use Payne's Grey and Burnt Umber, and in places, if it's getting too cold, a little bit of um, Cadmium Red. It's quite a nice combination to um, play around with. And if you're in doubt about that, then do a few colour swatches and try and try out. Um, the different combinations. I like to get a little bit of texture 
into the particular the area, the larger area of the tree trunk. Too flat if you just leave it um, one sort of layer of colour. So I work that a little bit wet into wet and maybe drop a bit of water in there to, to give it a little bit of texture and interest. I used a rigger, as you can see, for doing the smaller branches and the twigs. And I had to stop myself because I really didn't want to get it too fussy. Thought the middle ground was um, <clears throat> a little uh, not not as interesting as I would like, and so I'm. Um, I just added just a touch of colour in there, not too much because I wanted to keep that light tone. And then again, it's just really tightening up on some things. A few more leaves on the tree there. And then again, before I remove the masking fluid, I really want to make everything totally dry. I'm showing you this part because um, I really like this mask away rubber. I've put a link in the description box and um, some of my friends in my art group who've bought this are really pleased with it. It works so well and it takes the masking fluid off. You, you have to be, if you're using a fair amount of masking fluid then uh, it can be a bit tricky if you're just using your finger. And this works, as you can see here, um, it's always a bit messy. It works really well in taking the masking fluid off. I used quite a bit in this foreground, didn't I? So the colour of the thistles went on next. I didn't want to make it too pink. I think I used a bit of um, crimson alizarin, very diluted. But you could use whatever pink you like there. As a close-up here, you can see some of the marks that the masking fluid made, which um, I think looks quite attractive. I didn't want to leave these um, spaces here in the foreground that stand for the flowers totally white, so I mixed up a little bit of the colour that I used in the background for the trees, a very, very light purpley colour, which would have been ultramarine with a little bit of light red in it um, and I just pop that on some of them and in various places on the foreground to suggest a bit of shadow on there which um, I think it needed. Again just a little bit of tightening up here I um, put a few more green grasses, the long grasses that were in the picture on there just to um, I think overlap some of the flowers that were in there again to suggest some depth in the foreground. And this is like a bit of a great reveal isn't it when you take the masking fluid off from around a picture. It does make a difference, it's like putting a mount around it. I don't always do this but because I was clear on the composition I wanted then I, I did it in this case. As usual I hope you enjoyed the video and um, perhaps you can put some of the techniques into your own paintings. Bye for now and happy painting. Do subscribe if you don't want to miss anything else in the future.